Enemies. Those goblins, ghouls, and robots who are set out to challenge you at every moment. What makes some so memorable, and why are others just bad? Hello and welcome back to the Much Beans channel. I'm Caden, and in this video we are going to be filling your bestiaries with unique, enjoyable, and interesting enemies for your players to encounter. Let's get started. The method to effectively make enemies is based partly around the concept of harmony. Some of you might have heard this word used to describe music and notes played simultaneously to make a nice sound, but in game design, harmony is how well you can integrate something into a wider picture, improving the overall puzzle and how smoothly it fits together, like a puzzle piece. What you're aiming for is enemies which fit smoothly into the puzzle of your game, adding to the overall mood you're trying to portray, harmonizing with everything else. However, there are many elements within a game that enemies must harmonize with, so let's start by listing a few. Enemies are typically used as hazards. This means that they're one of the sole contributors to the game's difficulty, and you must balance them accordingly. This also significantly adds to the atmosphere and immersive experience of a game. They must work well with the environment and react or adapt to changes within it. That's another form of harmony within games. Everything affecting everything else, creating almost like an ecosystem which feels alive and realistic. To give you an example, take a pretty fun game, Noiter. The basic premise is to survive, kill the boss and win, like most roguelikes. And because of this, there are obviously enemies. A massive range in fact. However, it all seems to work. Why you ask? Well, all of these enemies, among other things, interact with each other. PC will attack rats around them, showing that there's an interaction between entities in the game. Some creatures will run away from others, and some, like bats, have different ranks of power. There are very clear interactions which make everything feel that much more real within the world. So you have your enemies blend with the environment perfectly, now what? Well, we have to see what's missing. We have interactions between enemies, but what about between the enemy and the player? Enemies have to react directly to the player's actions, the most obvious behaviour being attacking. Some mobs run away, others are neutral until you attack them, and it all really synergizes well with the player's decisions. It means you can choose your playstyle and things around will adapt relative to your choice. Go crazy and try and kill as many mobs as you can. Creatures will react and in turn make life much harder for you. But leaving them alone means that the enemies will react differently again and maybe try to wander around and seek you out. This makes the game feel reactive towards the player, like the actions within it matter, and is how really memorable fights can occur, where both the player and the enemy are forced to adapt to each other. Harmony is not the only thing that helps an effective cast of enemies. Another is novelty. This might go without saying, but if a player is less familiar with what's to come in an enemy lineup, i.e. they're all unique, then you can use this to instill a sense of fear or excitement, depending on the tone you're trying to create. You don't want it to be completely mundane, with new enemies just being reskinned previous old ones. Repeating enemies is fine, and is actually very much encouraged, as it is a good way to place some familiarity into the game overall. However, you don't want multiple different areas to be filled with fake, new species of old enemies and pretend it's exciting. Looking at you most new fantasy RPGs. Well, anyway, uniqueness and variety. This can be achieved quite effectively through art. Just giving enemies different looks, but still a consistent style, will break up any complete repetitiveness there is within a game, and adds more interest or significance to your enemy cast. But having different looks isn't everything. As well as adding visual variety, it's probably more significant to have ability variety. This links with how they interact with the environment like before, but also just changing up the attacks and effects they have on the player. Boiled down to the most simplistic description, a video game is essentially lots of decisions a player has to make to get to an end goal, and it means you can think of it like a problem. Once someone knows how to solve a problem, well then, given similar circumstances, they can solve it again, and again, and again. You get the idea. Enemies can become repetitive, surprisingly quickly, with no challenge or enjoyment. Once a player has killed an enemy, they don't want to only encounter that same enemy's attacks, because they know how to deal with it. That's why having a wide range of abilities is key. As a final point on this topic, you can link both abilities and visuals together. By making the visuals emulate the abilities of the enemies, it gives the player an idea on how to approach them. Don't give away everything, obviously but if you have certain features that are shown on the design itself, like a big burly physique showing strength but slowness, or big bloated bubbles all over the design to make it seem explosive, then at least the player can relate this to their pre-existing knowledge and figure out a rough idea on how to begin an attack. And it would be misleading for them if a tiny bug bit them and they lost like half their health. 
Hollow Knight has a massively varied enemy set, not even including the DLCs, and you can see that the designs and abilities are all unique. For example, the Moss Knight in Green Path has very obvious design influences, being that of its surroundings and also a sleek armour design, and it gives you the impression of strong and guarded but not completely tank-like. Something such as the False Knight, however, is massive in size relative to the player, and it gives you the impression of immense power, but slightly slower movement. The balance of design freedom, but also constraining the design based on traits and abilities, is pulled off very well in this game, which is why it feels so good to interact with. Bestiary check. Unique enemies also check. Now for positioning them. As stated before, enemies have the ability to control the difficulty curve of the game. This means you have to implement your bestiary in a way which will convey the arduousness you want for any stage of your game. In most, you'll want to build up the difficulty steadily throughout. In games such as Enter the Gungeon, enemies are implemented in a way where the game starts out easy enough, and as you progress, it gets more and more difficult, along with harder rooms throughout, to always be testing more skilled players. But you can also have pretty difficult enemies right from the start everywhere, to instill a sense of fear into the player from the very beginning, being thrown straight into the deep end the way Dark Souls does so skillfully. So the difficulty is really up to you. Another thing is that once the player has been initially introduced to enemies separately, you could have them placed together, because it can create interesting dynamics or scenarios. Blobulon are relatively simple to dispatch, but introduce a Killithid as well, then your options are much more limited, and you have to think differently. The two enemies complement each other, and doing this within your own game makes every situation different, therefore no repetitiveness. Well there it is, a full guide on enemies. Just to recap, we covered harmonising with the environment around them, grounding them into the game world, all being unique to give them a sense of individuality or personality, and implementation, how to use your set to vary the difficulty level. Please comment below anything you want, like feedback or how underqualified I am to be telling you about this, because it would genuinely be really useful for us. And I do enjoy reading through them a lot. And finally, for more random shenanigans, join our Discord where you can offer us suggestions, chat about anything, and meet some new people. Well, that's it for now, so see you later, bye!